Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled Neighbors Angry We Cut Tree Down on Our Own Property. My parents have a big apple tree at the end of the garden that is deceased and always shedding lots of inedible fruit which has led to pests digging up the grass. Apparently my dad's solution was to have it cut down by a professional tree surgeon. The neighbor behind is now kicking off, he keeps coming around and shouting at my mom, calling at all hours to speak to my dad and again shouting at my mom, threatening to sue them because they can see into their garden now and his wife is really upset about it. Question number one, I know there are things like tree preservation orders, I am trying to get in touch with the arborist to find out more if they have fallen foul of it, how much trouble are they in? Question number two, how do I deal with the neighbor? I live at the other end of the country but I have his number now and my plan was to call him and say he is not to phone or visit my grandparents property. Also that I have contacted the police to lock the previous incidents of harassment, is harassment the right thing? I have not called police 101 yet but will do today. If he does contact my parents again I will record the encounter and report to the police. Does this sound like a sensible game plan? Could I ask that you please hold your views on how stupid my dad's approach was? Had anyone known before we would have advised a different approach. I am very stressed trying to resolve this all remotely, many thanks in advance. And a user in the comments said, it is pretty unlikely that an apple tree in someone's garden will have a TPO on it, but always best to check first. Other than that, he has done nothing wrong. It is his land, he is entitled to plant or cut down as many trees as he likes. TPOs notwithstanding, the neighbor has absolutely no right to not have people look into his garden and he definitely has no right to force other people to provide screening to his garden using their own land. If he doesn't want people looking into his garden, he needs to plant his own tree. Call the neighbor if you like, but keep it very brief and to the point. The main thing is to send him a letter telling him not to contact your parents again and then lock what has happened so far to the police. You will probably find using the web form easier and quicker than calling 101, especially as you don't require police action at this stage. And another user in the comments said, if it is your dad's tree, then he can remove it. If he's inadvertently breached a TPO, that's been him and the local authority, the neighbor has no standing there. From what you have said, the neighbor is cheesed off because he has lost some privacy, that is his problem. If he wants to stop people being able to look into his property, he needs to plant a hedge or something. Assuming there is no covenants between the properties as to maintaining this tree or similar, which would be pretty unusual, then your dad has no obligation to maintain a neighbor's privacy. You don't buy a view nor do you buy privacy where the barrier is on other people's land. A court is not going to oblige a landowner to use their land in a certain way for the benefit of a neighbor. No harm in making a general, appreciate we could have warned you in advance, sorry, type non-apology, but beyond that I would do exactly as you suggest. And guys I'm curious, in case you have any annoying neighbors, have the conflicts with your neighbors gone down in 2020 compared to 2019 or has everything stayed the same or even gotten worse because you're more at home now? Funnily enough, I asked my mother, who is obviously still living in Europe, whether the annoying neighbor is still at her window every single day, smoking and talking to people on the streets. But for some reason, and my mom is not sure why either, the annoying neighbor is not at the window anymore. I would say that is at least one positive aspect that 2020 has brought up. Oh and by the way guys, please let me know your feedback about the audio quality today because I made some significant changes in my audio setup. Please let me know if it is worse, better or the same as before. Thank you very much. Either way, now we will read the update to the neighbor's story. 
Update number one from earlier before the call. Firstly, thank you all for taking the time to reply. I cannot tell you how much better my mental state is now as a result. Secondly, I have spoken to the arborist and it was not in a conservation area. There was no TPO and he had spoken to the council beforehand. So that just leaves the neighbor. Just for your interest, his garden backs onto my parents' garden, so his house is on another street. On reflection and some of your comments, I want to try and be amicable rather than an emotional response. But I really do need to be firm about contact. I asked my mom to take a picture of the tree so I could visualize and she said she would do it later because she is scared he will be there. Clearly not acceptable, but I also don't want an escalation. I will call him at lunch once the kids are down for a nap. Thank you all again, genuinely strangers on the internet have really saved my sanity today. Update number two, after the call to neighbor. Throughout the call they acknowledge that my parents can do what they want on their land and there's nothing they can do about it. More info, my parents garden dog lacks so from neighbor's garden they can now see through to the road. No one actually can see into their garden unless my family is in the garden and very tall. I rang the neighbor, it was the wife, so I started by saying we were sorry for the upset caused and that was never the intention, appreciated it, must have been a shock. She mentioned how much they enjoy the vista, they have just spent 80k putting in lots of big windows and now they have to pay for plants. They are also wildlife lovers and there were birds in the tree. I didn't respond. I asked how they got my mom's number, she said she did not know but passed me on to the husband who was nearby. I had assumed he wasn't there. The husband gets on the phone, I redo the whole, sorry you felt upset bit said to the wife, he got mom's number from the arborist. Explain that my mom was left feeling shaken and intimidated by his contact. He acknowledged he crossed the line, lots of back and forth where he talks about the shock and I say appreciate we could have done things differently like giving some advance notice. I make two key points that a there was no legal protection over the tree he pipes in he knows as he rang the council, number two the tree was deceased so it is a safety issue and number three it is their garden they can do what they like he is entitled to have an opinion but cannot make any demands. I say they want to remain amicable neighbors after all and what is done is done so hope this is the end of the matter. He continues to talk over me repeating about what a shock it was etc. So I have to be a little forceful and close by saying he should not call my mom or make unsolicited visits to their property in the future. He said, yep, no need to now. There was a noticeable change of tone here from him. I thanked him for speaking to me, wished him and the wife a pleasant day and ended the call. I felt a bit dirty biting my tongue so much but my logic was it is resolved. He knows he should not have spoken to my mom the way she did and hopefully they will never speak to or encounter these clowns again. Update number three, I rang my mom to give an update after the call. She mentioned that she had hidden exactly what the guy said from me and my dad so we wouldn't escalate things, my dad especially. The neighbor was incredibly rude and made comments about my mom's mental state for cutting down a tree along with other abusive comments. My heart wants to call back and give the cowardly bully both barrels but my head is saying it is resolved now so just to leave it which I had known before. My parents seem content with the outcome and if he misbehaves again I will go straight to the police with the incident log and transcript of the call I recorded. Conclusion. You will see from what I said on the phone that much was taken from your advice. I want to say again a big thank you for the support. It has been a very stressful day for me, which was made much easier with the help of this sub. Thanks again. And the next one is titled Evict Me? In Russia, tenant evicts you. A couple renting a two bedroom subletted room to to me on a month to month lease. I mentioned in the interview that I had done legal work in a housing clinic, this is important later. It started off great, did not talk to them much, just worked, came home and loafed in my room. Literally used the living room once, cleaned all dishes immediately after use, I am confident that I am a model tenant, all my prior roommates say so. This kind of confidence proves very useful when it turns out you are living with gaslighting nutbags. They slowly started losing it about every little thing. 
Forgot to flush the toilet once, they threw it in my face in every argument for the rest of my tenancy. I watched The Walking Dead with my brother, like at 6 to 8 pm at reasonable volume, they lost it about noise and advance notice for guests despite no prior discussion of notice, they accused me of stealing their frozen goods. One time I cooked an entire meal while girlfriend was in the living room watching a movie with her shoulders hiked up so high they might have been earrings. I ignored it until I had to take my meal and leave and could not remember whether the light had been on when I entered. I already knew I was effed. I guessed that it had been off so I turned it back off, she charged at me screaming, excuse me. I literally hid behind my bowl of spaghetti marinara, we locked eyes in silence as she huffed and puffed like a tapatio pooper. You want the lights on? Yes. Flick leaves in silence. These complaints were all accompanied with f-bombs and personal attacks. I honestly expected more integrity from a lawyer working at this, cannot fix stupid. And always assumed bad faith on my part. Disputes were only ever communicated over text even when I asked for verbal discussion as a more human medium. It was clear to me that undiagnosed mental struggles were at play, I would guess narcissism for him, anxiety disorder for her. I would always try to lower the decibel to find something I could accept responsibility for even when there wasn't anything. But emphasized that I'd really appreciate more manners and that roommate situations can really just fly off the handle and suck for everyone if people are not careful about how they communicate. So can you please find a more constructive way to communicate such as XYZ etc. I know this from experience, again housing clinic. The last time I explained that they clearly struggle with confrontation whereas I live and work in it and this is going to be worse for them than me if we flip the switch they are trying to flip, nothing doing. Finally, one day my bestie came over, to be nice we watched TV shows but in my room, quietly with the laptop's native speakers. We fell asleep on accident around 11pm on a Friday, the next day we got dim sum. Dropped off leftovers on the counter, did not refrigerate it to avoid dehydrating it. Came back to a note saying, this has been sitting out for 3 hours. I ignored it, grabbed the food and headed out to go camping. I got a slew of texts saying that we made raucous noise the night before and dropping f-bombs. Property manager told me they had complained to her but that she didn't care. It is a Friday. Finally I put my foot down a little more firmly and said something like, I never agreed to guest stuff. We made no noise and I don't take orders from you. I have civil discussions. Let me know if you are available for one of those. Came back to an eviction notice on my door. Waves of WTFs washed over me, these dumb Fs were so out of control that they waltzed ass backwards into my literal court. The switch flips, I start finding constant humiliating and unfixable complaints to race with them. The girlfriend had long hair, I found it in the microwave, I sent a picture to the group chat. Refrigerator sent to the group chat, toothbrush area group chat, I said that this is effin unsanitary and disgusting and a liability for landlords. And she needs to find a one bedroom somewhere if she cannot stop living like a pig. I honestly don't care and she has zero control over her hair but well, welcome to getting harassed with unreasonable BS. In fact they point this out and I walk all over it, they try to have someone over to look at my room. I wait until the visitor arrives to announce my right to 48 hours notice, they stop spending any time outside their room at all, I start spending lots of time in the common area, cooking stinky fish and using the living room. They cut off my internet, which did throw me, until I realized I still had access to my old co-op's Xfinity wireless. Manager at this point let slip that they've been going through subtenants like burner phones for the last 5 years. Finally the last day of the eviction notice arrives. After several days of reminder texts from them, they come home to find a thoughtful letter explaining that our town passed a just cause eviction requirement 4 months ago. True, cannot write this crap and they don't have one so I am going nowhere. Moreover, the new law attaches treble damages and criminal liability for violations, also true, and I am going to give them the big black diddly. Heard boyfriend laugh out loud through the wall at flute pitch.
At this point they stopped texting me at all, as the reality sunk in that they had spent a month sending me buckets of jury PORN like complete morons. I got a VM from a mediator who told me three times in one call that they above all did not want me to sue them, deleted it and then I kid you not, they literally moved out of the house, stopped living there. And throughout all this I have effectively compartmentalized this whole area of my life and I am happily overachieving at my job, having planned this all out at the beginning of the month. Eventually my fellowship ended and I left out of my own volition. I got a full deposit too, I never did sue because who has time for that, but I was happy to let the specter of a suit haunt those anxious sadists for years. To quote Cartman, don't F me. And guys, if you have watched until here, please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments and also like the video if you want to support me. Thank you so much in advance. And by the way, speaking about Cartman, are you watching any cartoons nowadays? My favorite cartoons nowadays are probably South Park, Family Guy and still The Simpsons. What sort of cartoons are you watching? Let me know in the comments. And the next one is titled, This is private property, sir. A few pieces of scenario you need to keep in mind. I'm a student and I rent a shared old house with other students. The house has no garden, but there's a long paved space around. All walled, none of us can leave it since there was a second lockdown, so we have to stay in this space for daily activities. Second thing to know is that I recently picked up daily exercise since I recovered from Big C, I'm not infected anymore, and I'm lucky that there's a space good enough beside our house with a nice curb I can use to some things I couldn't otherwise. The third thing is that this part of the paved space, even though close to the house, is the opposite way from the street door, which means that most people only go there either to park their cars, there are always some on the opposite side, or because they live in the garage next door who shares the space. The garage is not used for cars and I guess it is reconditioned as a tiny flat instead. All houses around me are owned by the same landlady who lives somewhere close. Incident, I was doing squats there and minding my business when this older neighbor, who I don't know because I moved in September, parks in front of the space. He starts moving towards me so I greet him, which he doesn't reciprocate. Instead he just states with the most proponent expression, you know this is private property. I still don't know if he is another tenant or the husband of the landlady, so I supposed he might be right that I had no legalistic right to stand in this space nobody used to exercise. So I just answered that I was sorry and didn't knew before picking my phone and leaving, by this point he already left towards the garage. This was unusual because this is a friendly little town and I didn't even think the person that used that space could care or even less prevent young people from exercising just because he didn't like to see it while getting off the car. I am very sure nobody inside the garage could know I was there and much less be bothered. I was raised into helping out people, especially neighbors who you never know when you might need to help you and to me this is frankly a dick move in normal times and even worse during a lockdown. Maybe it also struck me as especially sucky-ish because I am an anarchist and I absolutely cannot fathom why someone would do something like this to go out of his way just to be a dick and deprive people from using an empty space just because it is yours. Either because he also rents it or he is married to the lady who owns 10th of houses she just uses to get 80% of people's paychecks just for having inherited a paper. But rant finished, this is not the time to make revolutions, he had his chance to be a nice neighbor and well, he blew it. Next week I see him again and he is changing a tire that he obviously blew by clashing with the curb, I start exercising in the only available spot besides my door. Worse spot but never mind, I see him struggle for a good 25 minutes with no avail before asking me if I could land a hand. Now I know how to do it and I could absolutely help him even if I am probably not physically stronger, he is in his 40s. I would absolutely help any other neighbor or passerby, but for this guy I prefer to stand before his section of the pavement and tell him that I am sorry I cannot get there as that is private property. The guy then just packed up his stuff and went inside, called to a crane, and I finished my exercise. 
And the last one is just a little bonus story that has nothing to do with neighbors or illegal advice and it was posted on r slash ripe stories by user Annie Oakley. It is titled Reverse I Don't Work Here Experience. I just remembered a hilarious reverse I don't work here experience I had around June 2020. I can't believe I pulled it off to be honest. So back when the TP supplies were still low and they had to start rationing things to two per person and such, I had an interesting run-in with what I will call a hoarder Karen. I was at the store early morning-ish for other things, just in my PJs, slippers and a lanyard on my neck with my keys and when I saw they had just restocked the toilet paper, so I stopped to grab a pack. I noticed a woman a little ways further down the aisle stuffing her damn cart full of toilet paper, right in front of one of the many large signs stating the two pack per person rule. Now usually I am excessively passive like to a serious fault but somehow I had just had enough that day and a switch was flipped or something. I had enough of seeing people be this greedy and of all the crap our essential workers have to deal with, just everything. So I walked over to her and said, excuse me ma'am, but I believe it is two packs per person actually. They won't let you get all of those I don't think, in as polite and helpful a tone as possible. She just glared at me and said, how do you know? So I pointed out the sign literally in front of her face. She did not even look at it, since I'm sure she knew full well it was there of course and instead just snapped, what do you care anyways, it's not like you work here. Now this is where I would usually just shrug it off and walk away, but I was literally listening to reddit stories on youtube on the one wireless earpiece I had in at the time, just for some background entertainment while shopping. And so I was inspired to do what I did next, which was lie like a mofo. I said, actually ma'am, I do work here. I'm just off shift and doing some personal shopping, but I would be happy to find you a manager and they can let you know if you will be able to get those or not. All with that sickly sweet customer service smile. She rolled her eyes and groaned, fine, whatever, and started putting them back on the shelf. I gave her the usual customer service, so sorry for the inconvenience, but have a great day, and walked off with a triumphant smirk of evil joy and utter relief that I even got away with it. I saw her walk up to her register while I was leaving, she gave me another eye roll but she only had the two packs of toilet paper in her cart, so I called that a win. And guys unfortunately we have already reached the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed today's stories and if you haven't already, please also go to patreon.com slash ripe youtube where I upload exclusive reddit videos starting at just $3 a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from youtube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.